والصلاة والسلام على المؤوس رحمة للعالمين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اليوم خمسة وعشرون من شهر ذو القعدة ألف وأربعمائة واثنان وأربعون الموافق لستة من شهر سبعة ألفين وواحد وعشرين نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك رياض الصالحين أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك فينا وفيما نتعلمه وأن يتقبل منا القليل والكثير أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يتغمد المؤلف برحمة منه وفضل وأن ينفعنا بما نتعلمه من كتابه So today inshallah we'll move on to the next uh, hadith which is the hadith of uh, Abu Huraira right? Yeah, um, yeah, uh, Abdurrahman الدنيا ملعونة وملعون ما فيها إلا ذكر الله وما ولا. أين هذا الحديث؟ يقول المؤلف رحمه الله وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ألا إن الدنيا ملعونة وملعون ما فيها إلا ذكر الله وما والاه وعالما ومتعلما. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said and uh, if you remember we are still uh, dealing with the chapter of uh, فضل الزهد <coughs> the virtue of uh, الزهد والتقلل من الدنيا uh, not Uh, seeking uh, 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 too much in the way a person will be uh, occupied by the dunya and at the same time forgetting the akhirah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Dunya mal'una wa mal'una ma fiha. Dunya is cursed and whatsoever you find in the dunya also is cursed. إِلَّا ذِكْهُ اللَّهِ وَمَا وَالَهِ The only thing that is not cursed is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatsoever is connected to it. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatsoever is related to it. So this is just like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have never created jinns and human beings except for the purpose of worship. It means whatever you are doing in this dunya, if it is not benefiting your akhirah, it is useless. It is useless. You are sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as we always mention that worship is not just to confine yourself to the masjid. You know, staying in the masjid, you don't go out of the masjid reading Quran, you don't stop reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, doing a takaf, fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. This is not uh, what is called ibadah alone. <coughs> ibadah is quite greater than this. Is to do that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with and he is pleased with. So you have pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, in the mu'amalat is also ibadah. You know, including you smile when you meet your brother is also ibadah. You fix your business, you do it according to the way Allah SWT wants is ibadah. Although you're getting money, you know, is ibadah. That's why they always mention that wealth is not evil in itself. It's all about the method you are getting it and the method you are spending it, the way you deal with it. Good idea. So <clears throat> it is not just to stay in the masjid doing ihtikaf, no, it's quite... Uh, broader than that. So that's how Islam look at the concept of of, uh, of Ibadah. <coughs> so whatever is not benefiting your Akhirah, you know, whatever is not benefiting your Akhirah, staying away from it is is called Zuhud, as we always mention, mention this. So this dunya is curse, and whatsoever you find in it is curse, except these four things mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you can see each and every one of them is related to that purpose of, of creation. The reason why we're created is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come and do what he wants here on earth. 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make life easy for us by making things halal for us so that we can find life easy, you know, and worship Him in the way He wants. Do you get an idea? So we shouldn't make this the priority. You know, sometimes we make the goal uh, being the dunya, you know, and the akhirah is, is the means. We use the akhirah to seek uh, the dunya. That's really, really, really bad. You know, dunya is supposed to be the means. We use it to reach the akhirah. Because the purpose is the akhirah, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His infinite mercy, He makes the dunya halal for us. To get an idea, so it shouldn't be the goal. It should remain in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed it. So, illa dhikrullah. The first thing is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the remembrance of Allah? Righteousness. Uh, uttering those adhkar that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. The best form of uh, dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your righteousness. You know, righteousness is the best form of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To remember Allah, to reflect upon Him, to stay away from bad things, to always do the good things. That's the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you don't say it with the tongue, you know, those uh, adhkar which are uh, mustahabbat, you know, recommended, even if you don't do them, but you put them into practice and action, that's the ultimate, you know, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing is mawala, whatsoever is related to it, you know. You have the, the utterance of the dhikr, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla quwata illa billah, astaghfirullah, Allahumma kfir li wa tuba alayya inna kanta tawab al ghafoor, and whatsoever is related to it, the righteous deed you're doing, the prayers, you know, uh, the, the charity you are giving, you know, the hajj you are doing, the fasting you are doing, and anything that is connected to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, O Aliman, O a scholar, you study until the time you acquire the title of scholarship. You become a scholar in Islam. And these are the inheritors of the prophets. You know, they are the second category, right after the prophets and the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why one of the righteous predecessors said, There is knowledge, there is nothing which could be compared with knowledge if the intention is, is good. There is nothing that could be compared with the knowledge if the intention is, is good. And that's true because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored the knowledge even over uh, the Tawheed, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the knowledge first before the Tawheed when He says, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ لِذَنْبِكَ You should know that there is none to be worshipped. He started with the knowledge first because how do you perfect your Tawheed and do it correctly in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants if you don't know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So knowledge comes first. You can't practice the Tawheed if you don't know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. How do you respect him if you don't even know who he is? You have to study about Allah, his names, his uluhiyya, his rububiyya, his attributes. Then your iman will increase. That's why they said, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to the companions, he said, who is the best amongst the, 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 the creation? And the companion said, uh, uh, angels, you know, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, uh, them, them uh, why, why can't they believe, you know? He said, who is the best amongst the creation in terms of Iman? And then they, they said, angels. And the Prophet wasallam said, uh, no big deal, you know. Why can't they believe? You know, they are in the heavens. They are the closest uh, creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were the angels. They see a lot of things which we don't see. They know a lot of things which you don't know. That's the reason why their Iman is so excellent, so great, you know, so perfect. You know. And you see their humbleness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so excellent, unbelievable, it's very amazing, you know, regardless of their size, but when you see them in their Iman, subhanAllah. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Mikail, that, that the day he was informed about hell, he never laughed again, you know. SubhanAllah, out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although he's not going to go to that place, but SubhanAllah, you can imagine how much they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ra'aytu Jibreel la laylata usriya bi kal hirs al bali. He said, I saw Jibreel the night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took me to the heavens. I saw Jibreel kal hirs al bali. Very humble, you know, bending his head out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very humble, he said, I saw him, you know. And you know who is Jibreel, you know, the leader of the angels. And he's so huge in terms of size. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that I saw him with 600 wings. Israfil, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I saw him, you know, looking at the arch of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, not even blinking, waiting for the time the signal will be given to him so that he can blow in the, in the trumpet. These are the angels, you know, they don't go against Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because their knowledge about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is so excellent and perfect. They know who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is much 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 more greater than the, the human beings so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them no big deal concerning this because they have knowledge much greater than anybody else why can't they believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like that why can't they have the consciousness like that that means knowledge necessitates consciousness this is how it should be if you find somebody who has a knowledge but he is not reflecting upon it that person is ignorant as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء He says the, the, the real one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are, are the scholars. He says if you're looking for somebody who fears Allah, look at the scholars. So that means if the knowledge is not, uh, I mean, inviting a person, is not taking a person to, you know, behave well towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that knowledge is is useless. The person will be counted as one of the ignorance. So knowledge is the best thing uh, you do. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, I really urge you to exercise patience, maximize your patience. You know, maximize your patience when studying. Uh, you really need to be patient because shaitan knows that this is the best thing you are doing. So he will never stop fighting you for it. So don't give up, you know, don't give up, don't give up. Uh, uh, try imitate the predecessors, you know, in their attitude. We don't do like what they do. They sacrifice their life, their time for the sake of the knowledge, you know, day and night. They sleep very little, you know. They mention some of them to be waking up at night more than 13 times. So when, <laughs> when does he sleep, you know, more than 13 times just to write what? comes to his mind in the sleep, you know. So they don't sleep that much, you know, because he sleeps with the worry of missing something in the knowledge. So he wakes up a lot. That's why they became who they are. And look at what they left for the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the legacy, you know. How valuable it is. That's the result of not resting properly. I'm not saying you shouldn't rest, but as a student of knowledge, you really need to sacrifice your time and your life for the sake of the knowledge, then you'll be able to get the little knowledge is going to grant you. So in our time, we have a lot of distractions, you know, so many things. I don't want to call them commitment because in the past also they are committed, highly committed with so many things, you know. But still they were able to produce, you know. They are very committed, you know, with so many things. Actually, they do things manually, you know. If there, there is somebody who needs more time, it's them, not us. But still they do. Much greater than what we're producing. So at least, my dear brothers and sisters, don't be lazy. Any class you are attending which is beneficial and good class, you have somebody who is murabbi that guides, don't miss that class. You know. Try your best to be very, 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 very dedicated to that classroom. You will appreciate this word when you leave this life and you know there is no way for you to stay here forever. You, are, you have to leave. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, one of those people who are praised by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala are not included in the curse is a scholar. And the last one is a student of knowledge and I guess this one we don't need to talk about it because it is included in the, in the third one. So these are the four things the Prophet Sallallahu said are not cursed in this, in this life. Okay. وعن عبد الله بن مسعود قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تتخذ الضيعة فترغب في الدنيا. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said لا تتخذ الضيعة فترغب في الدنيا. Uh, do not 
take abaya abaya this is the land so they don't have a land and keep it just like that for targabufi at dunya uh, it doesn't mean that it is prohibited for you to buy a land no it's halal you know the companions of the prophet sallallahu they used to have it but he mentioned what he meant by that when he says fi at dunya in which your heart will be so much attached and connected to the dunya which will cause you to forget allah this is where the blame lies it's not about you getting the lands you getting the houses you can have millions of houses all of them under your uh, ownership you know that will be no issue at all but the point is is that distracting you from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not when it distracts you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have to know that this is the time for you to stay away from it. No matter how much it is. Because the relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is priceless. You Allah. The relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, good relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is priceless. You know, you cannot have a price for them, you know. And you don't know, you know, Wallahi, if you know that how much you know, you get from Allah SWT, if you establish a good and excellent relationship between you and him, a person will never agree, you know, will never agree to sacrifice this for, for the sake of the dunya. So, so do understand this uh, properly. Whatsoever distract you from Allah SWT, you should know that this is now the time for you to stay away from it. Anything, you know, with no exception. Anything that is distracting you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should know that this is the time for you to stay away from it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ma qalla wa kafa khayru mi ma kathura wa alha. What is small and it is enough, uh, enough for you to address your need, khayru mi ma kathura wa alha. is far greater than that which is big, but unfortunately it distracts you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see how the Prophet also might helps a person to understand why do we live in this dunya, you know. He says to have a little from Allah SWT, but it is enough for you to address your need, you know. You need education, you have money for that. You need food, you have money for that. You need this, you have money for that. He said this is far greater than huge amount, you know, which is distracting you from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is my uh, since he advised to you, you know, look at your relationship, you know, always uh, pay attention to the relationship you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there is anything that is distracting you and making you, you know, taking you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should know that this is the time for you to stay away from it. If it is something that could be fixed, you should fix it. If it is something that cannot be fixed, this is the time that you should look for other alternatives. Whosoever this person might be, and whatsoever this person might be. So that's the meaning of do not take the land, do not own a land. It doesn't mean you shouldn't buy a land, it means do not have something of this dunya which your heart will be connected to it, and also at the same time you forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, don't you ever do that. So whatever you know that is going to distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not do it. So take the dunya as, as a means, not goal. Then inshallah you will succeed, even if you have a lot. Because we do have companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who are very rich, you know, very rich, very rich. And that never took them away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قال وانا عبد الله بن عمرو بن العاص قال مر علينا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ونحن نعالج خصا لنا فقال ما هذا فقلنا قد وهي فنحن نصلح فقال ما ارى الامر الا اعجل من ذلك سبحان الله عبد الله بن عمرو بن العاص said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he passed through us while we are trying to fix our small house which is made, made by, by the wood. So this is a very uh, house, that, I mean deficient house, small house which is deficient, you know, they are fixing it because it has a problem with it. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saw them fixing it and he said, what is this? They said, Ya Rasulullah, this is our 
uh, possession, you know, and uh, it has problems, that's why we are fixing it, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ma ar al amra illa a'ajal min dhalik. SubhanAllah. He says, I don't see this affair except that it is more quicker than this. You know what he meant? He meant that this dunya is so short and death is much closer to you than this. I mean, you are busy fixing this, but death is very near to you. And this also should be understood correctly. You know, it doesn't mean when your house got a problem, you shouldn't fix it. It doesn't mean when your uh, car got a problem, you shouldn't fix it. It doesn't mean when your property has a problem, you shouldn't fix it. Uh, no, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu never understood this. These are just phrases said by the Prophet Sallallahu to let them reflect upon the Akhirah much more than the way they, they pay attention to the dunya. That's it. It doesn't mean that when they have something which is having problem or deficiency, they shouldn't fix it. The Prophet Sallallahu never meant that. So the Sunnah is supposed to be understood correctly. So we are all talking about the Prophet Sallallahu manhaj in reminding people about the Akhirah and connecting them with the Akhirah. That's why he told them one day, who do you consider as a bankrupt person amongst you? They said, Ya Rasulullah, the bankrupt person is somebody who doesn't have dirham or dinar. Somebody who has no dirham, no dinar. The Prophet Sallallahu said, no, the bankrupt person in my ummah is not this one. Is somebody who will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with huge amount of wealth. You know, uh, 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 I'm sorry, he will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with huge amount of reward. So he will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, uh, I mean, a reward that is so big, you know. But unfortunately, he backbited this person and he cursed this person and he accused this person and he harmed this person, you know. Although he asked so many things, he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. He fasted to, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. He went for hajj how many times, you know, he paid the charity. He did so many things to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unfortunately, his relationship with others is terrible. So when he come back to, the, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, the Prophet sallallahu said, Waqad shata mahala. He cursed this person. Allah SWT will take from his reward to pay the debt he owe him because he cursed him. That has to be paid, it's not free. You know, SubhanAllah. And he backbited that person, he talked against him. I mean, he said something bad about him when he wasn't there. The Prophet said they will take from his reward and pay that one. And he, uh, he lied against that, that person, he slander, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take from his reward and pay that person. He smacked that person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take from his reward and pay him. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be taken from the reward of that person because all of those things that he did are called right of others. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi latu addanna al-hukuku. Aw latu addanna al-hukuk. He says, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every right that you have taken from others, you have to give it back to them when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. It's a very heavy responsibility. He says, every right, every right. You know, now you're happy, you know. You are taking it, you know. And that miskin doesn't have any power. But wallahi. Either in this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it by force, or in the hereafter. Every right somebody took from another person, it has to be given. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he found two sheep hitting each other. He said, do you know why they're fighting? They said, no, Ya Rasulullah. He said, well, I can Allah alam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And on the day of judgment, justice is going to be established between them. These are animals, right? How about the human being? So you can see the injustice that is taking place on earth nowadays. You think it's free? No, Allah, it is not. It will never be free. That's why being in the authority is not easy. It's not easy, it's not easy. Whoever talk, and he has a right to talk. The mahkama, you know, the real issue is going to be open between you and him on the day of judgment. Imagine if you are leading 1 million people, 10 million people, you know, 30 million, 40 million, and some people, they, 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 they are leading 1 billion, you know. 
with what injustice imagine all of those creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are going to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take that right from this person how do you think this person will find himself surviving easily when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so always remember this you know regardless of your righteousness it will be useless if you are harming others that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said al muslimu man salim al muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadihi the real Muslims is the one that other believers are free from any harm that comes from his hand and his tongue. Always question yourself, are you like this? You know, Some of us, they are not just talking against the normal believers, they are talking about the scholars. Fulan, 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 busy, busy criticizing the scholars. And they think they will succeed and they think it's okay. It is not okay. With the normal person, it's not okay. And if a person talk against a scholar or a student of knowledge and they don't deserve that, you know, that's worse than talking against a normal person. And the responsibility is going to be heavier on the day of judgment when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu said, this is the real bankrupt person in my ummah. So the Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be taken from his reward to pay the debt and the restitutions he owes other, others, you know, on the day of judgment until the time faniyat hasanatu. All of his righteous deed finished, and he doesn't have any more righteous deed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. What is he going to do? Allah will take from their sins and cast on him, and then he will be taken to hell. Billah. He will be taken to hell. Billah. So the Prophet Allah said, This is the real bankrupt person. So you can see how the Prophet ﷺ is trying to keep the companions, you know, remembering the Akhirah. And he's, as he always tells them, Akhiru min dhikri hadim illadhar. Always remember the destroyer of the pleasure. He doesn't want them to, to focus on the dunya so much, you know. He wants them to keep remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is where we are heading to, you know. And you have to go to that place. So why, why can't you remember it all the time, you know. Since this is the final destination, you know, this is just a temporary stay, in, uh, you know, you're trying to have rest and get as much as you can of good deeds so that you can facilitate, you know, the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make it easier and also make it peaceful and also make it a success, you know, when you see him on the day of judgment. So please do understand the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa correctly. Okay. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, uh, he says, I don't see this affair of ours except that it is more quicker than this. But it doesn't also mean that we should have the same attitude that some people are having. Nowadays, they lost hope. Yeah, Qiyamah is almost coming. Why do I get busy with the dunya? You know, death is almost coming. You know, why do I get busy with the dunya? Remember, 1,400 years, 442 years. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the companions, you know, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said in the Quran, you know, Iqtarabati Sa'ah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Iqtarabati Sa'ah and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says Iqtarabati Sa'ah. The day of judgment is very near. And now we have how many? 1,400 years. Does that mean it's not near? No, it is. It is very near. It is very near. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Bu'ithdu anna wa sa'ata kahatin. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has sent me together with the Day of Judgment just like these, you know, the Sharabi ilayhi, as-sababatu wa al-wusta. Bu'ithdu min nasmi as-sa'a. So it is very near. Uh, but it doesn't mean you should be demotivated. You know, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never understood this. You know, they have this remembrance in their heart and they know that, yes, it is very near and they're heading back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they're very productive in this life. Very, very productive. They never become negligent and lazy. Yeah, that's why Umar radiallahu anhu, when he sees a person, you know, when he sees a person, uh, uh, when he sees a person being lazy, he used to tell them, Stand up and, and move. Fa'inna fil amri mutasa. You should tell them that stand up and keep moving. Be productive in your life because we still have respite. We still have time. You know, subhanAllah. You will still have time. That's why the focus is on the present. Always focus on the present. 
because the future you don't know when is it going to come so always focus on the present make sure that your present is excellent you know don't let the remembrance of death demotivate you in being productive in this life whatsoever is going to benefit you keep doing it so the best way to avoid falling into trouble you know in uh, that thing that i have just mentioned the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he says the bankrupt person is somebody who will come back to allah subhanahu wa with so much righteous deed but unfortunately he cursed others he backbited others you know you can see these are the amal al lisan the actions of the tongue the best way to avoid getting into trouble is the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir falyaqul khayran aw liyasmut Whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter, he should always say good or keep quiet. You know, this, this hadith, I really love it, you know, because it summarized the, 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 the path to success for all of us, you know. If you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter, you should always say good or keep quiet. قال سميت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن لكل أمة فتنة وفتنة أمتي المال كعب بن عياض said I heard the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying إن لكل أمة فتنة every nation that Allah سبحانه وتعالى created had a test Allah سبحانه وتعالى tested them with something and the test of my ummah is is wealth every nation had a test and the test of my ummah is its wealth. So we should be very careful, you know, when you have the wealth, make sure that it doesn't take you away from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنَا بِعَمْرٍ وَيُقَالُ أَبُوْ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ وَيُقَالُ أَبُوْ لَيْلَ عُثْمَانُ بِنْ عَفَان It is narrated by Abu Amr and some said he is Abu Abdullah, some said Abu Layla, and this is Uthman ibn Affan, Ghani al Ali Ta'arif. If you just say Uthman ibn Affan, uh, it, it, it will bring him you know, out more than when you refer him to his kunya. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ لِبْنِ آدَمَ حَقٌ فِي سِوَى هَذِينَ خِصَالٍ بَيْتٌ يَسْكُنُهُ وَثَوْبٌ يُوَارِي عَوْرَتَهُ وَجِلْفُ الْخُبْزِ وَالْمَا The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said a human, being, a human being, Ibn Adam, does not have a right to focus on anything except, one, uh, except these four things. That's how you should interpret the hadith. It doesn't mean that you don't have a right to get anything else except these things. Uh, no, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking about the things that if you are focusing on the dunya, these are the, the focus on the dunya. It means don't get, I mean, uh, don't, don't, don't let the dunya get inside your heart that much. You know. Don't let it get inside your heart that much. Number one is, the house that will accommodate you. The house that you will dwell in it. And a piece of cloth that covers your aura. وَجِلْفُ الْخُبْزِ And the piece of khubz, bread. It has so many interpretations, but this is the closest one, inshallah. Some said, we are khubz, the bag that you put, uh, the, the khubz, the bread in it, is called jilf. Walma and what? You know, so you can see how the Prophet Sallallahu is motivating people to have the taqallul in the dunya. So, if you look at his life, it's all, it's all about application of this, you know. Whatever comes to the Prophet Sallallahu usually it's going to be dis disbursed to the others. But as I always mention, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't earn any at all. It doesn't mean this. If you look at the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu they know all of these. But they are wealthy, you know. But they focus on the Akhirah much more than the way they focus on the dunya. Dunya never distracted them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
قال الترمذي سمعت ابا داوود سليمان بن سالم البلخي يقول سمعت النظر ابن الشومي الين يقول الجلف والخبز ليس معه ادام ان النظر انتربريتيشن باي ابو داوود ام سوري النظر ابن الشومي is a sal jilf jilf al khubz this is the jilf al khubz this is the khubz alladhi laysa ma'ahu idam the khubz that you don't have soup attached to it wa qala ghayruhu jilf al khubz huwa ghalid al khubz some scholar said no this is the the khubz that is so hard you know very harsh wa qala al harawi wa muladu huwa nawi aw al khubz kal jawalik والخروج. These are all types of we are. We are الخبز means the container, the bag where you put the the breads in it. So Allah Alam. But the closest one is the first two. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking about the خبز itself, not the place where you put the خبز. وأنا عبد الله بن الشخير بكسر الشيني والخاء المعجمة المعجماتين. أنه قال أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو يقرأ ألهاكم التكاثر قال يقول ابن آدم مالي مالي وهل لك يا ابن آدم ما من مالك إلا ما أكلت فأفنيت أو لبست فأبليت أو تصدقت فأمضيت. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in this hadith of Abdullah bin Shakhir he says يقول ابن عاد قال عبد الله بن الشخير أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو يقرأ I met the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم at a time where he was reciting الحاكم التكاثر الحاكم التكاثر means you are busy with تكاثر تكاثر means seeking a lot of money يعني piling money you know busy with the dunya so he recited Al-Hakum Al-Takathur Hatta Zurtum Al-Maqabir You are busy with the dunya Hatta Zurtum Al-Maqabir Until the time you visit the grave Because you are visiting the grave You are not going to stay there So it's just like a visit That's why the scholar said The statement which some of us are mentioning When they said to a person who died Aada ila mafahul akhir Now he went back to the final destination yeah, that's wrong because the grave is not the final destination. This is just a place of transit. You're going to have a transit for a moment and then move to the next uh, stage, which is the final destination. No life after after that. Hatta zurtum al maqabir. You know, so until the time you become the people of the maqabir, like your visitors. So that's the closest uh, one. You know, not that, not that. حتى زرتم المقابر until we visit the grave physically to go and visit and reflect upon it. No, it is talking about the person himself who dies. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was met by Abdullah bin Shakhir reciting this ayah. فقال and then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said يقول ابن آدم مالي مالي. You find a son of Adam always saying. Mali, Mali, you know, my wealth, my wealth. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَحَلَّكَ يَا بْنَ آدَمَ مِنْ مَالِكَ إِلَّا مَا أَكَلْتَ فَأَفْنَيْتَ He said, what do you have of your wealth, Ya Ibn Adam, from your wealth? You know, what do you have from your wealth except that which you eat and you finish it? You eat it and finish it. أَوْلَ بِيْسْتَ فَأَبْلَيْتَ or you wear, you wore it, you know, until the time it becomes old. All the one that you gave in charity, you know, you plan to give the charity and you executed that, that plan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this is, the only thing that that left for you and this is what benefits you in this life you know you have a huge amount of money but what benefits you is only this yeah, billions of dollars yeah, trillions of dollars if that is somebody who is having this but at the same time which one is yours that amount that you ate that amount that you wore 
and that amounts that you uh, 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 you give in charity. That's what remains for you. You build a castle. In this castle, where are you going to stay? So where are you going to say? Very small uh, part of that castle. So technically this is what, <laughs> what you own in this life, you know. SubhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, salamu wa ta'ala, So the Prophet sallallahu is saying this not to discourage, discourage you in uh, yani getting these things, but to discourage you in uh, planning for that in the way it would distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we have a lot of uh, mentions of those people who uh, are so wealthy and their wealth caused them to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have somebody who says he doesn't even agree that the Day of Judgment is going to happen. And why is that? Because he's rich. SubhanAllah. He says, he says, I don't even think that the Day of Judgment is going to happen. You know? And if, in case there is something called Day of Judgment, he says, I will definitely be among the best, you know, on the Day of Judgment. Allah says, يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَالَهُ أَخْلَدَى Ibn Kathir, in his book, al Bidaya wa Nihaya, he narrated one of the very amazing stories about how much the wealth is distracting people, you know, some people from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is this uh, uh, leader, you know, Muslim leader, and he built a house for Samaha Dar al Khuld. <laughs> he built a house and he called this house the, the House of Eternity. Darul Khuld, it means the, the, <laughs> the house of life forever, you know. And, and guess what happened, you know. Ibn Kathir says, he died the day he get inside the house. Right after he get inside the house, Allah SWT took his life. SubhanAllah. Definitely people, people have seen lessons in those days, you know. Because people know, since he called it Darul Khuldan, he's the leader, everyone will know the name, you know. Uh, yeah, they don't talk because they cannot talk out of the fear of his uh, anger, but Allah SWT kept lesson for them. He called the house Darul Khuld. And Allah SWT took his life right after he get inside the, the house. So, what are you talking about, you know? Somebody has a very nice poetry. Uh, uh, a gift for you. It says, وَكَمِّنْ مَلِكٍ رُفِعَتْ لَهُ عَلَامَاتِ فَلَمَّا عَلَى مَاتِ وَكَمِّنْ مَلِكٍ رُفِعَتْ لَهُ عَلَامَاتِ فَلَمَّا عَلَى مَاتِ You know, you know, perhaps you have a lot of, I mean, uh, uh, kings, you know, their name was taken up, you know, they have a lot of positions, you know, their name is respected, highly respected, you know. He says, And he put himself into that status, you know, going up, Allah SWT took his life. As the Prophet said in Sahih, that Allah SWT promised that no dunya will go up except that he brings it down. The only thing that Allah SWT will never take it down by himself is the religious practices but any dunya that you have goes up that is a way I mean Allah SWT promised that it has to come down one day وعن عبد الله بن مغفل قال قال رجل للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا رسول الله والله إني لا أحبك فقال انظر ماذا تقول فقال والله إني لا أحبك ثلاث مرات فقال إن كنت تحبني فأعد للفقر تجفافا فإن الفقر أسرع إلى من يحبني من السيل إلى منتهى سبحان الله The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in this hadith that Abdullah ibn Ghaffal said a person came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and said يا رسول الله I love you. The Prophet said, 
pay attention to what you're saying. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I love you. The Prophet said, pay attention to what you're saying. So three, three uh, times the person is saying it, and the Prophet has been telling him, pay attention to what you're saying. فَقَالَ إِنْ كُنْتَ تُحِبَّنِي تُحِبَّنِي فَاعِدَّ لِلْفَقْرِ تِجِفَافَ He says, if you truly love me, then you should get ready with the test from time to time from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially when it comes to the faqr, poverty. Tijfaf, this is kind of the clothes somebody is wearing. So that means you're going to be visited by this from time to time. Because if you look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu you know what kind of life is that in terms of wealth in this dunya. But in terms of success and inner satisfaction and peace of mind, it is the greatest life. And that's the ultimate success. If a person understands what success is all about, that's the ultimate success. To have peace of mind and tranquility. It's not about how much you have. You know. It's about how much content you are. It's about how much tranquility you have in your heart. It's about how much peace you have in your heart. That's success in life. Yeah, otherwise, if success is measured by how much money you have, we shouldn't see suicide being committed by the rich and those uh, famous m musicians and uh, mod modelers, you know. I forgot the name of those uh, people, you know. But they commit suicide. How many times we see in the news the movie makers who kill themselves, they hang themselves, they found them being dead. Either they take poison or they kill themselves in their room and they write the letter. Why are they killing themselves, you know? No good in life. And if you're to invite them to Islam, if you're to invite them to righteousness, they might not understand what you're talking about, you know? SubhanAllah, only Allah knows how much they're suffering from inside because there is no way for somebody who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get relief in his life no way no way for somebody who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have relief in this life May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good and help us to maintain our attitude and good manners and be with him throughout our life until until we meet him so the Prophet said, فَعِدَّ لِلْفَقْرِ تِجْفَافَ He should prepare for the, for the faqr. You will be tested by this. فَإِنَّ الْفَقْرَ أَسْرَوْ إِلَى مَنْ يُحِبُّنِي مِنَ السَّيْلِ إِلَى مُنْتَهَا Because faqr is quicker to those people who loves me, you know, in terms of affecting, you know, somebody faqr is quicker to those people who love me than the sail. You know, the sail is the kind of the water that is coming from the, from the, from the mountain. It's seasonal, comes from the mountain and goes, and you see a big river, you know, going, uh, going on the road, you know, and then uh, it, uh, after a few days, it is gone. You know. So it is very quick, you know, to reach that place where it is intended for it to go. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, the faqr affecting those people who truly love me, you know, Allah Subhanahu testing them with this is very quick. But this is not to say that, I mean, this is uh, uh, not to say that you shouldn't, you know, <laughs> love the Prophet Sallallahu No, that was the ultimate success. If you're looking for success in this life, tranquility, peace of mind, and a last matter to keep you away from depression, you know, you get it through the love of the Prophet Sallallahu But what does his love mean? To follow him. That's the meaning of the love. Even if you don't say it at all. You don't say, I love the Prophet Sallallahu but you truly love him from your heart, you know, but you never, you never tell others. You know, but you practice the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and you always follow him. This is the real love. This is the real, real love. Otherwise, what is the benefit of a love that you don't do for that person, you know? We don't do for Muhammad Sallallahu but, but we do what, uh, whatever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked us to do, you know. We don't do it for his sake, but we do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're doing that which the Prophet sallallahu invited us to do. That's the true love for the Prophet sallallahu So we should be uh, clear about this, you know, so that a person will not deceive himself, you know, keep on uh, talking about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love for uh, the Prophet sallallahu but at the same time he always goes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu so, dear brothers and sisters, 
والله والله you see I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no life that is better than a life with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know اقسموا بالله عز وجل you know there is no life which is better than life with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so don't you ever compromise this no matter how much difficult is your life you know how much difficult you find yourself in well, I, uh, whatever difficulties uh, I mean bothering you as long as your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is correct and perfect is tabshir you know you should be happy with that the real tragedy the real tragedy is to be in a state of war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you Allah that's the real tragedy to be in a state of war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the real tragedy so be whoever you want to be in this life in terms of richness be whoever you want to be in this life in terms of business be, be whoever you want to be in this life you know in terms of fame but make sure that that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not compromised Musa ibn Umair used to be so rich and so wealthy his mother was so wealthy you know so rich you know but he went to uh, the Prophet sallallahu and he accepted Islam. His mother chased him out of the house. He never looked at the kind of affluent life they used to enjoy, you know. It doesn't distract him. He lived a life of poverty, you know. He couldn't find anything. In the way when he was killed during the Battle of Uhud, they couldn't find something to cover him with. SubhanAllah. Many people who know him, they cried a lot. Even after, after his death, you know, long ago whenever they remind they remember him they cried a lot subhanallah they cry a lot because they know who he was before when they were in Mecca and now they can see his position and his situation and he was happy with that you know he doesn't care about that what he cares what worries him is that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know to see something affecting it did he get what he is looking for yes he did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his uh, mentioned you know his issue in the book uh, in the book he gave the Prophet Sallallahu in the Quran which we read in Surah Al-Ahzab Min al-Mu'minin rijalun sadaqu ma'ahad Allah You have so many examples from the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu in this regard Suhaib al-Rumi was a very rich person you know he buried his wealth in Mecca when he wanted to run away to protect his religion you know the people at the, the Meccans got him they said you came here so look as a poor person and now you're leaving Mecca you know with with your wealth they say you're lying you can't he said oh oh that's what you're thinking about he, he told them if I give you the wealth would you let me go they say yes for sure he went he showed them the wealth and they got it they said Masalama, you know go he sacrificed everything the Prophet Sallallahu he saw him he said Rabbi Halbaya definitely your deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala succeeded you know that's the most profitable business you engaged in. We have a lot of examples like this, you know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them, replaces for them, you know. When they go back to Medina, many of them, they manage to retreat back much more greater, you know. They don't go and take it from the, those people who took it from them, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in their business and their earning. So to conclude, my dear brothers and sisters, Wallahi, don't worry. As long as your life and your relationship with Allah SWT is perfect, don't worry at all. But if your relationship between, uh, I mean, with Allah SWT is not good, you should worry. You know, you should worry. You should be depressed, you know. You should quickly repent and come back and fix it, you know. <coughs> this is better for you in this life. And also when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will receive good. In this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you good. And in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a success and make it easy for us to establish a good relationship with Him and not to compromise any part of our relationship with, with Him and to make it perfect all the time. And uh, to help us, you know, to maintain this attitude of establishing an excellent relationship with with him until the time we meet him which we call istiqama in the bi kulli jamilin kafir abdurrahman let's move to questions inshallah barakallahu fikum assalamu alaikum
Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. I have the first question from Sister Shafa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ya Shaykh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Do we find the time of midnight for the last time of praying Isha by seeing the duration of hours between Maghrib and Fajr in our country and then divide it in half? Yes, exactly this is how it is. Night starts from Maghrib. So you, you start counting from uh, Maghrib uh, until the time Fajr, you know, uh, arrive. For instance, here, I guess Maghrib is around um, 7.30, uh, around 7.30. So 7.30 to, uh, to 5.55, 5.56, I think, uh, is the time for Fajr. So whatever hours you have the, uh, uh, in between, you divide them into two, then you will know the, the midnight. Inshallah. Okay, next question by Sister Surya. Assalamu alaikum, Chef. May Allah bless Salam. you and your family. Amen. Amen, and you too. In this current situation, with many people going through loss of income, should we give out more uh -huh. charity in cash and food items, uh, or spend money doing qurbani uh, to take advantage of the following month? Uh, get a um, uh, loss of what? Income. Yeah, so she's asking about uh, which one is better. Yes, uh, either to give in charity or to save money for a kurbani. Try do both, uh, Shafa, you know, as uh, Surya. And as, as long as you can do both, then go for both. If you cannot engage in doing both, you know, and uh, then you should look for somebody who has a current need and support him immediately with whatever you can. That's how we should uh, do it. I mean, make the priority. Uh, try do both. If you can do both, you know, uh, do the here or uh, slaughter slaughter the animal and give the meat to those people who need it, and also support the needy. You know, people who are uh, out of their income, they lost their job. You know, so many people lost their job. If you look for those uh, people and support them, that would be great, inshallah. Mm -hmm. But if you cannot, if you're going to give the uh, have the priority, then just look for somebody who need right now and currently and then pass him the uh, the money and support him in his life mm. okay, next question by brother razair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alaikum amin wa alaikum shaykh a brother asks what's the ruling on males applying in barakallahu alaikum uh, if they don't need it and, and it makes them like a, a woman, then this is wrong Islamically. And when it makes them uh, like the woman, you know, this is wrong Islamically. For instance, in the vast majority of the cultures, the one who does the hinna on the hand is the is the is the is the female. Yeah. So when when a person does it and it makes him like a woman, then uh, that's wrong Islamically. He cannot do it. And uh, whatever the case might be, in any culture the person is living, it's better to avoid avoid it. Because Allah SWT cursed those who are imitating sisters and the sisters who are imitating brothers. Allah wants everyone to be happy with the way He created him and to remain in the way He is. Yeah. May Allah SWT grant us good and tawfiq. Hinna, uh, the, the, the place where it is recommended and good is when you have white beard. Yeah, then you can put Hinna on it white beard or white hair, you know, uh, you put henna on it. Mm. And if carpenters do it, that's also fine, right? Some yeah. carpenters, they do it to protect their hands. Uh, when there is a need for that, you need for uh, for medication or for protection, there is a need for that. This is different from beautification. Wherever a person lives, uh, and people should know that, yes, uh, he's doing it for medication. Mm. Sayyid, Next question by Sister Muni. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh. Assalamu alaikum wa jazakumullah khaira. Ameen wa fikum. She has two questions. Uh, the first question is, is it true that fasting is the only word, uh, is the only ibadah that cannot be taken away from a person to compensate others, to pay for the others, other person's bad deeds? Uh, I don't, I don't know that. Uh, what I know is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that Allah SWT would take from his righteousness. And that's uh, up to Allah SWT to choose which one. 
And since the Prophet sallallahu said, Hatta idha faniyat hasanatuhu, that means even fasting also is going to be taken. He said, until the time his righteous deed finished. He doesn't have any more righteous deed. Then Allah will take from others their sins and put on him. Allah SWT will take the sins of others and put on him. So Allah alam. May Allah SWT grant us good. As I said, Sister Muni, the best is whenever we open our mouth to talk about others, we should say good. Mm. It's very dangerous, very dangerous. But nowadays we take it lightly, you know. Uh, backbiting or uh, talking against the Muslims is very simple now, especially with the existence of the social media. People turn to have no respect, you know, uh, to others, you know, they don't respect others, you know, many, many, many people, you see all of these things. That's why sometimes staying away from uh, this place is better for you and your heart. You know? May Allah grant us good. Mm. Um, my second question is, who is considered at war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala besides those involved in riba? The person who, who hates the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, Allah said, Man adali waliyan faqad adantu bil harb. If uh, a person hates my wali, the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a righteous person, somebody who is really, really sincere in his righteousness. This person is very special in the eyes of Allah. In a way, if you hate him, it's like you are announcing a war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, so that's, that's it. SubhanAllah. That's why respecting uh, people is, is necessary, you know. Because sometimes you don't know the person that you disrespect and you don't know who he is. May yeah, Allah grant us good. I mean. Our next question from Sister Saada. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve you, Shaykh. I mean, and you too. A follow-up to the question Sister Shafa asked yesterday. Hmm. Regarding washing the hands before beginning wudu, or the one that wakes up from sleep, does that refer to the washing of the hands in the beginning of wudu, which comes right before the washing the mouth and nose, or washing the hands before beginning wudu? Uh, that's the washing of the hand before beginning the wudu. Uh, washing the hand before beginning the wudu. When you look at the hadith, it includes also the one that you're talking about, uh, washing the hand before beginning the uh, wudu. But most of the scholars refer it to the first wash of the hand that a person is doing. They say it's mustahab. Most of the scholars say it's mustahab, and the hadith they use to support that is that hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is the qada ahadukum min nawmihi fala yaghmis yadahu fil anai hatta yaghsilahu ma thalathan. Fina ahadukum la yadri aina baat yadhu. When a person wakes up from a sleep, he shouldn't put his hand in the in the container he is using to make wudu until he wash the hand three three times. Nowadays, usually you don't have this, but I think you uh, uh, there's uh, they still have uh, masajid who are applying this concept nowadays. They don't make wudu through the tap directly. They still have those small, small, small containers, and they make wudu. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that uh, he shouldn't put his hand inside the container before he washes it three times. So they use this hadith to support the first wash of the hand. You get it? Uh, but, as I, but as I said, the Prophet to my knowledge, never made wudu without washing this. So it takes, take it closer to necessi necessity. You know, it's inappropriate and wrong. I have no doubt in this for a person to begin his wudu with the wash of the mouth before he washes his hand, even if he is using the tap, you know, or whatsoever. I mean, yeah, cool. Next question by Sayyid Jamil. Hey, yeah, cool. Is better achieved through Sufism and Tariqat? Uh, Zuhud, it is not connected to any, any system, any system. It is connected to righteousness. That's why the definition of zuhud is, is what? To stay away from anything that is not benefiting your akhirah. The Rasulullah never stayed away from good food uh, and he can find it. When a good thing comes to the Prophet he enjoys it. So what does he mean by zuhud then? And he wore nice clothes sometimes when he get them, you know. And he was happy when somebody gave him. So what it means 
is to make sure that you stay away from anything that is not benefiting your akhirah. Whatsoever distracts you from the akhirah and is not benefiting your akhirah to stay away from it, this is, this is zuhud. You don't relate it to this, to that, to this, to that, no. Related to the concept and the meaning itself. You look into your activities, your actions, your behavior, whatever you know you're doing which is not benefiting, bringing benefit to the akhirah is better for you to stay away from it. When we say benefiting the akhirah means something that, you know, is, is somehow useless to you. You get the idea. So things that benefit your akhirah, they are a lot. If you uh, study, it benefits your akhirah. You look for risk, is benefit, it is benefiting your akhirah. Unless if you take it from the wrong way, you know. Almost the life of a believer, if he does it according to the way Sharia prescribed for him, it is beneficial to his akhirah. But there are things which are a waste of time, you know, watching things, you know, uh, which are halal. You know, it's halal for you to watch them. You just sit down and watch things which are halal. But it doesn't, it takes your time, you know. That time could be spent in doing something beneficial to your dunya and your akhirah, you know. So although that what you're doing is halal, but zuhud is to stay away from it. And for sure when you talk about zuhud, it is also part of the zuhud to stay away from all of the sins and the ma'asi and the evil doings. May Allah grant us good and tawfiq and help us to uh, stick ourselves with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu much more than affiliating ourselves to titles, whatever they are. Because nowadays these titles, they separated the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Kullu hizbin bima ladehim falihun. Every hizb, every group is just happy with that which she does. And this one is cursing that one, this one is cursing that one. What is the way out? To follow the way of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sticking with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And whatever you do, you must make sure that you have evidence to support yourself when you meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. If he asks you, why did you do that? Why do you claim that this is my religion? You must make sure that you have a support for them and for that. And where do we get the support? Only from two things, Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah grant us good. Next question by Abdul Wahid. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Can you recommend a book regarding Aqidah for beginners? Uh, a, a lot, you know, a lot of uh, uh, books have uh, been written by by the by the scholars. I will get, inshallah, one uh, book I think written by Ibn Uthameen. Very simple, very simple, inshallah, and light. Be the light, Allah. I will. I give it to Abdul Rahman to share with everyone, inshallah. Next question by Sister Shafa. Uh, Sheikh, I'm confused. Can we stick to just the four fards for wudu? Will it invalidate our wudu? Reading the ayah of the Quran, I have done wudu like that for many times. If that was wrong, should I repent? Uh, yes, don't do it again. That's uh, absolutely wrong. Uh, then do it again. Uh, make sure that whatever you're doing now, uh, you do it perfectly. That strong underst uh, understanding should be corrected. Yeah, there are some scholars who say it's mustahab, and whatever is mustahab, if a person doesn't do it, uh, it doesn't invalidate his prayer. But the correct opinion, there are many of those mustahabat, uh, they are wajibat, and the Prophet sallallahu never stay away from them. Never stay away from them. Yeah, so just now and start from now, you know, from now on onwards, make wudu like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Start from washing your hand and then your mouth together with the nose and then your face and then your hand from the tip of the finger until the elbow, you know, and the other one. And then wipe your hair from the beginning till the end and then come back again and then go to the ears and rub the ears and then wash your feet to the ankle. That's how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was making wudu throughout his life. So we should have uswa. All the scholars who talk about that in the fiqh, they never meant that a person should just leave it and take the wajibat. They never meant that. I do believe 100% if you were to see them, you will see them making wudu exactly like Rasulullah sallam all the time. Otherwise, if they used to do it in the way they put in the book, you know, uh, it would be narrated to us. But to my knowledge, nobody is saying this, you know. So they do it perfectly in the way the Prophet ﷺ did it, and that means this is how we're supposed to, to do it. May Allah grant us good and tawfiq. And uh, next question by Sister Shafa. Uh, 
question by Sister Muni. Uh, it is regarding the question of the time of Isha between Isha and Fajr. Mm -hmm. If we sleep without praying the Sunnah of Isha, can we still pray it after waking up? Yes, inshallah. Whatever after the time of Isha has finished. Yeah, whatever used to be the attitude of a Muslim, and then he forgot or he overslept. You know, uh, he can make it up afterwards, inshallah. Mm. So it will be a makeup. It wouldn't be. Uh, it, will be a it will be a makeup, inshallah. Unless if he forgot it and he takes the hadith of the Prophet, that he forgot or he overslept and he takes the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu then yes, it will not be a makeup. It will be a da, inshallah. Because ma thabata lil fardi thabata li an nafl. Whatever is established for the fard, it is also supposed to be applicable on the on the sunnah. Hmm. Next question by Sister Surya. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. For someone who uses words and actions to purposely offend, outcast, and cause emotional hurt to another person, mm. would the weight of the sin be equal to someone who does oppression or to someone who oppresses? That's oppression, you know. Sins in general, they are also part of oppression. When he talks against his Muslim brother, is something that he doesn't deserve. That's oppression, that's zulm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ability to follow that hadith of the Prophet sallallahu I always imagine a life whereby Muslims are, subhanAllah, comfortable to live with their Muslims, you know, brothers and sisters, you know. You are so happy, you know that nobody's talking about you. I know it's almost impossible to have this kind of life, but it's really excellent to see a life or to live in a community where people respect others, you know. Muslims are respected, highly respected, you know. You don't talk against anyone. And we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, brothers and sisters. When you see your brother doing something wrong, rather than talking, you go and fix him. That's very excellent life. You know? May Allah grant us good. Yes, Khalid. Next question by Brother Azir. No. Based on the hadith, fil jannati thamani tawabadin fiha babun yusamma arrayyan la yadukuluhu illa sa'imun rahu al-bukhari. Do you know the name of the other seven gates? Wallahu alam. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned this and he mentioned that there are so many other doors. You know, not just babu arrayyan, but there are so many other doors. Uh, for the Jannah, you know, uh, they have name and the Prophet also mentioned that we have Thamania, eight doors. But I don't have a hadith that mentioned the name of each and every one of them. But the Prophet also said Abu Bakr is going to be invited from all of those doors. So you have Babu Siddiqun for sure. But uh, Abu Bakr is going to be invited from all of these doors. When he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is there anyone who will be invited from all of these doors? He said, yes, and you're one of them. <laughs> SubhanAllah. But I don't have any access to a hadith that name those doors, and this hadith is it's authentic. I'm, I don't know. Is there any weak hadith which mentions that? Uh, I can't remember. I, in my mind, is, it is clinging that the hadith that talks about Babu Siddiq and Babu Kedha, Babu Kedha, but I cannot confirm it. That's an old reading. Uh, Next question by Sister Muni. Sir, how do we fight laziness in reading the morning and evening at uh, Also, if we see laziness in a person, how can we help them? Just stand up and walk. Whenever you start doing the adhkar and sleepy and, and sleep comes, then stand up and walk. Inshallah, shaitan will stay away from you in a moment. Be the light Allah. It will not resist. Shaitan doesn't have a time to spend with one person doing, fighting him in one thing, you know. He quickly changed to something else. So when a person feels lazy, he should stand up and walk. You know? And always reflect upon the reward, how much you're getting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, in a few days, your body will become familiar with it. And then you will feel that you cannot survive without doing those adhkar. Allah grant us good. And the same to be said to somebody who is lazy in terms of adhkar. Khalid, how many questions left? Inshallah, three. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sister Saga is asking a question I believe we have answered. She's asking, can a person pray the Sunnah of Isha even after waking up? 
after midnight, even after waking up after midnight. Yeah. We answer this question. We answer this question. Mm. Yes. Next question by Abdul Wahid. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. For a woman with long hair, how do women wash their long hair? Uh, they don't need to, uh, let's say the long hair, uh, they don't need to uh, bring the hair and keep on dragging it until they put water in every single part of it. Uh, they just start from the root from the beginning of the hair, like this, and then they come to the and to the, 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 the end of the, the root of the hair from the back side. Do you get an idea? She comes like this. Uh, until the end of this place and then she put her hand inside, you know, and then come back again That's it, you know, even if she doesn't go to the, all of the hair It doesn't matter because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say He said The masa is on the on the hair Okay, so when they come like this until the end they already wipe the hair you get it uh, the head Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to wipe the head, you know. So they come from here until here, and then they put the hand underneath and then come back again. That's it, inshallah. Okay, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you good and to love all of you and to be with you wherever you are. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put barakah in your life and to uh, grant you ability to learn more and more and more in Islam and to be able to put it into practice and action. Innahu bi kulli jameelin kafeel. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashara la ilaha illa anta astaghfir ka atubi ilayk. See you on uh, Thursday with the uh, wa inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.